So we are recording. I'm going to meet you guys if that's okay. And then, um, yeah, so like I was saying, I feel like this call is, like, I feel like it's really important and I, I hope that you guys, like, can take something away from it to use with your business, but I also, like I was saying, it's not something that you can just, like, you'll learn it and then you're going to do it and it's just going to work. Like, it's something that you have to really internalize and you might have to, and you are going to have to practice over and over and over again before you kind of find your style with it and before you really can make it effective for your business. And consistency over time is what's going to make this work. So um, I'm gonna pull up my little outline here. And as, as I'm talking, I'm like, um, I don't know if I even pulled mine up. So let's go find out what I have up on my screen, shall we? Let's see here. Um, let's go here. Okay, it's up here somewhere. There it is. Oh, there's my kids. Okay, so pull this up. And this is also in our inspiration page in case anybody needs to find it. But what we're going to talk about today is relationship marketing. And basically, when it comes to, you know, reaching out to people outside of your inner circle, there are multiple ways that you can do it. And I personally really like relationship marketing. So, you know, you can send cold messages, which is actually what Chrissy, you guys, has done. Chrissy Tiger builds her business on cold messages, which, like, good for her. <laughs> she killed it. She was super consistent. And if that is your style, do it. Like, do whatever feels natural to you and, feel, you know, like, whatever is something that you can be consistent with over time for the long haul, that's what you need to do because that's what you're gonna stick with and that's what's gonna help you grow your business. For me, relationship marketing works for me. It's something that I like to do. I, I don't get burnt out on it because I'm constantly getting to know people and I'm building relationships with people. And for me, that's more fun than sending out like a cold message and seeing if people are gonna respond. So it's all about just finding your approach, what works for you, but I'm gonna share tonight with you guys like what I do every single day. This is my non-negotiable. This is the thing that I get, I am consistent about no matter what happens in my day. I sit down and I do my, my relationship marketing. I send out my connects, I do my follow-ups, and that's how I have really kind of grown my business. And Actually, the reason I love it is because I feel like it draws, it draws um, people who are like me and who I enjoy being around to me and to my team or to my groups. Um, and so, like, for me, that in and of itself is worth everything because, like, you guys are the people I hang out with all the time. I spend more time with you guys than I spend with, like, my friends. Like, I don't really have friends. <laughs> no, I do, but, like you know, they, they live everywhere and I hang out with you guys way more and you guys are my friends. And so I love that this approach will bring more friends into your life basically is what I'm trying to say. So turning your cold market warm. So basically we're taking those relationships with people that we've never met before and we're making them into our inner circle so that, you know, we can build a relationship with them and hopefully we can solve, I can solve their problems for them. So what is relationship marketing? Relationship marketing is a philosophy of doing business that puts relationships and people ahead of sales and products. So this kind of ties into what I said before about Zaya is not your brand, you are your brand. So if you want to um if you want to sell yourself, you have to put other people first because you have to build that trust with other people. You need to be a friend, basically, is what I'm telling you. You have to be a good person, and you need to be a friend to people if you want them to trust you. So the goal is of connecting and building relationships is to serve and bring value first. So when you are going out and talking to people that you do not know, these are people you've never met before, they, um, or they might be like friends of friends, people that you're not, um, people that are not in your inner circle, your friends and family, these are the people that we're talking to. And so when you're going out and making these connects with them, the goal of your conversation initially is to serve them and bring value to them. So your goal is to help them, basically. 
You want to find out anything that you can help them with because if you can help them with something, they're going to trust you. They're going to realize that you are putting their best interest in front of your own. This is the conversation you're having with them is not about you. It's about them and how you can help them in their life. So for example, say you're talking to someone and they're saying that their kid is sick and they just moved to town. Maybe they live in your town and they're like, I don't even know who to go to. You recommend a doctor to them. You say, you know what? You should go see my doctor. He's amazing. You would love him. Like this is his number, whatever. This is you helping someone. It doesn't, it might not have to do with Zaya at all, you guys, but just the goal is to help people. We are in the business of serving. And when we're doing relationship marketing, we want to help them. So the more we invest in relationships, the more likely people are to want to do business with us and to recommend our business to others. So just having that relationship with them, they're knowing and loving and trusting you. Um, oh, I accidentally put a little extra text box there. That doesn't mean anything. We'll move on. <laughs> so developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. So relationships, relationships, relationships. So people only care about three things. They want to know, can I trust you? Do you care about me? And are you good at what you do? Those are the three things that they care about. And it does not matter Okay, so the can I trust you and do you care about me? That's when you start to put their interests in front of your own and that's when you start helping them with whatever they're struggling with. Like I said, maybe they need a referral to a doctor. Maybe they just need some prayers. You know, maybe they're going through a hard time and you can just say, hey, I'll, I'll pray for you. You know, just anything that shows them that you care about them. And then number three, are you good at what you do? So this one, I just wanted to address this because I think there's two ways you can go about it. Excuse me. Some people will say, fake it till you make it, which I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say is wrong. So they might say, like, I'm just starting this business, and then when they're going out and talking to people, they're talking to them like they're a six-figure earner or something like that. I personally don't like that approach because I feel like that once they get to really know where you're at with your business, that's gonna create some distrust with them and with you. And so honesty is always the best policy if you're talking to someone and if they, if you want them to think that you're good at what you do, you need to be honest. So you need to say, Hey, you know, I just signed up a couple months ago too. I'm still learning the ropes, but I love it. Our team is amazing. My upline will help us get going. Um, you know, lean on the team, lean on me. If I'm your upline, lean on whoever is your sponsor, or your upline, because we will help you and whoever joins our team with you get going. So having that confidence in the team and in who sponsored you is really important because when you're talking to other people, then you want to be able to tell them, Hey, these people are going to help us get going. I'm not going to pretend like I'm, I'm in a position I'm not in, you know what I'm saying? So just be honest with where you're at. If your purpose is to meet people and deepen relationships, your business is going to grow. It also makes growing your business enjoyable. So like I said, for me, cold messages are not enjoyable. That's not something that I can stick with for the long term. I like to build relationships with people. I like to get to know them. And then once they join the team or become a customer or a hostess, I have so much more fun interacting with them because I feel like I know them. I feel like they're my friend. I feel like like we are friends, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're friends, so it, it just makes it so much more fun. So um, that's just kind of an introduction to relationship marketing. Do you guys have any questions before we go into actually how you connect with people and how you start this process? No, but I have a comment. Okay. I heard, I heard a really good um, just analogy kind of, instead of fake it till you make it, <clears throat> which, I used to kind of talk about, but she talked about, and I don't even remember where this is from, but about how faking the, um, the way you feel like thinking like you are a Zaya executive and maybe faking the way you feel about your business, not faking it to your customers, to your followers, but getting yourself in the mindset of whatever rank you want to be or of the person at the top, top of the company. And that just really resonated with me. Um, 
because that's what it's all about. It's about your mindset. When you think things are going to happen, they happen. And yeah, so just a little tidbit because there's that. <laughs> no, I love that. I think your mindset is so powerful. I mean, it just is. And if you're going into this process and you're, you're out there acting like, oh, I'm a newbie. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't do this. Then, then that's, what's going to come forward. You know, you're not going to have that confidence and you're not going to be able to show people like, Hey, I got goals and I'm going to do this and I'm going to kill it. And you can either come with me or you can watch from the sideline, you know, like those are kind of your options. So I love that. There you go. That was it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. Okay. So making connections. So this is the start of how do we do this? How do we reach out to people that we don't know? And how do we start to build those relationships with them? And this is not my content, you guys. This is something that I do. This is something I have done for years. This is what I did back when I did Beachbody. This is just the method that resonates with me. I use TeamZ, which is a CRM, and this is their method, and I am sharing with you the scripts that they have provided for me. So you are getting their scripts, and I'm paying for it. <laughs> and, and I am in my second round of boot camp with them. And I feel like even though this is something that I did previously, I feel like now it is making sense. It is registering for me. I have done it. Like I said, I did one boot camp. I did now I'm in the second round of boot camp. And I feel like I'm getting so much better at this to the point where I'm actually comfortable sharing this with you guys because I have been practicing it and practicing it. And I feel like this is becoming really the foundation of what I do every single day with Zaya. So um, going out and making connections with people. All, it's so simple, you guys. Like it is not, all you have to do is get out of your own way and just do this. Like literally copy and paste and you will eventually make those connections. So all you're doing is you're going out and making people stay. That's it. They'll be happy that you reached out and maybe even check out your profile. So you're going to send them a message. So say you have someone on Facebook that you're friends with. Maybe it's a good friend. Maybe it's someone you don't really know that well. You're going to pull them up and you're going to give them the sample script right here. Hi, obviously change the name. Just stopping by to say hello. How are you? I hope your day is awesome. This is so simple. And I know it's going to feel really, really weird. And you're going to be tempted to be like, let me just pull up their Facebook and let me look through their profile. I need to find something we have in common. I need to like talk about something on their profile. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. It is a waste of time because if they do not respond to this, they're not going to respond to probably another message that you send them. Okay. These are proven to work and they've worked for me. They've worked for other people in my boot camp, like this, these are so simple, you guys, and it is just takes the thinking out of the process. So just stopping by to say hello, how are you? I hope your day is awesome. Um, it's been a while since I checked in with you. How are you? I hope all is going great. Or I saw you cross my feed and thought I'd say hello. How are you? I hope your day is awesome. Like so, so simple. It's crazy. So the goal, you know, we're going out and making their day. That's great. You're starting a conversation with them. And while you're having that conversation, you want to be listening for wants and needs and then seek to fulfill them. Like I said, if you can help them, that is the goal. Focus more on being interested than interesting. So before you answer any message that they send you, I want you to reread what they send you because it's really easy to get like, I do this when I'm going too fast, I'll read what they wrote and then they'll ask me a question at the bottom. And instead of acknowledging what they said, I'm just like, Oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to talk about myself. But, but that's not the goal. The goal is to get to know them and build that relationship. So I need to acknowledge what they're saying back to me. If I say, how was your day? They're like, Oh, it was really fun. We played outside. The kids had a great day. How was your day? Instead of me being like, my day was great. I'm going to ask, what did you do with your kids outside? How old are your kids? Did you go to the park? Where do you live? Like, I'm going to ask them more questions about them because I'm trying to be more interested than just sharing what I did during that day. So make sure you really read through their messages. It might take you two or three times to really read through it and make sure you are responding with heart. 
Okay. Hey, Rachel, um, real yeah. quick. Yeah. Um, your screen, we cannot see it. It just says Zoom. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I put the chat on earlier. I thought it was just me, but um, Kimberly just commented that it's her too. So you could just be like, oh, no. Okay, hold on. Um, let me see what I can do. I know I turned off my video in hopes that my internet would like pick up and make it better, but it didn't. <laughs> Does that work? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. I think, I don't know if I hit a weird button or what, but it was sharing the wrong screen. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> oh, crap. So what did you miss? <laughs> it's fine. I had you, you had that template. You gave us that Wix shout out, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I have that up. I can okay. Start. Yeah. Okay. Let's so hopefully if you're watching the recording, pull that up. Yeah. <laughs> you Rewind. Rewind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I totally missed that. Um, okay, so yes, here are the scripts that I was saying. Just copy and paste those. Um, focus more on being interested than interesting. And then just some tidbits. So if you are struggling to know what to talk about with people, use the form and use it as a guide. So F stands for family, occupation, recreation, motivation. And if you don't know what any of that means, I'm not going to go over it right now, but I did link the form blog from Teamsy. And in case you're wondering, Teamsy is right here. That's how you spell it. T-E-A-M-Z-Y. And I love it. And I swear by it. And I know it's not for everybody, but if, if it's for you, like check it out. There's a 30 day free trial. And then it's like 29 bucks a month after that. But for me, I feel like it's really worth it. So, um, so anyway, yes, if you're struggling to know what to talk to them about, check out this blog. And the cool part about this blog is he actually gives you scripts in there on ideas of what to say to people. And I love that. So go check that out. Um, and uh, make sure you read through that. But I feel like this is important, which is why I put it in red. 50% of people will not respond. They just won't like maybe even fewer than that. Sometimes they won't respond and it's not you don't take it personally. It's just, it is the way it is of the 50% that respond only 30% of those will turn into invites, which means seven out of 10 conversations, they are not going to lead to you inviting them to anything, but because you invested in that relationship, you planted seeds and spread fertilizer for next time. So, you know, when you're sending out these scripts, when you're sending out a, um, a connect, making someone's day, if they respond to you, you need to write them down. Like write their name down, keep track of them because if they responded to you, they trust you in some way on some level. It might not be like, I trust you with my deepest, darkest secrets, but they like trust you enough to say, oh, I'm great. Hope you're having a good weekend or you know, whatever. So write their name down and depending on where your conversation goes, you're going to want to follow back up with them. You're going to want to come back around and send them like the next script in a couple of months. So just be aware that you have to stay consistent and you have to write down the people that you're connecting with because otherwise people are going to fall through the cracks and that's just what happens with this business. So make sure that you are keeping track of people. Okay. So this is just, you're making their day. Um, getting to know them, you're asking about their family, what they do for a living, and then you are going to transition to an invite. And I have a sample conversation here that I, this is not an actual one. I made this up, but this is like similar to what, um, some conversations that I have had previously or recently, I should say. Um, so the goal of transitioning to the invite is to share what you do and why you're passionate about it. So I'm really excited that we had these challenges this week from Zaya to figure out our why. And, you know, they gave us our, you know, made us create a list so that we had to reach out to these people. But having your why is going to be key and knowing why you're doing this is going to be so important because when you talk to people, that's going to come out. You're going to have that conversation with people and they want to know why you're doing it and they're going to connect with that. So, um, 
Yes, so when they ask you about you, answer the questions and feather in the business is the goal. So there are three different ways, three different benefits of the business that you can kind of feather in. You could talk about personal benefits, like, oh, I love that I have all this freedom and time with my kids. It's been really helpful for us. You know, my husband's gone a lot. I get to be at home with them and still make an income. Financial benefits. Oh, yeah, you know, I've been paying off my student loans times seven since I started this. It's been super helpful for my family's debt situation, you know, whatever it might be. The mission, you know, talk about the mission of Zaya. There are so many, you know, depending on the person you're talking to, you can probably kind of tell what kind of benefits they're going to be looking for with Zaya potentially, or like what they would most relate to. There's going to be people who just want the mission of empowering people and they're going to want community. There's other people who are going to have big financial goals. You know, it just totally, totally depends on the person you're talking to, but hopefully as you're talking to them, you can kind of get a feel for what, what kind of benefits they would like. And then you can kind of share that about yourself with them so that they get an idea of, of what Zaya can provide for them because it's providing it for you. So here's my example. <clears throat> okay. So they're like, Oh, Hey, how are you doing? How have you been? This is something you guys, these are like things that I actually say like so good. Life has been absolutely crazy with having three kids, but I'm really lucky because I've been working from home for the last year now. Kind of sounds crazy, but I'm so much happier now than I've ever been. It's a pretty great feeling, you know? And you know, sometimes people are like, yeah, I don't know what that's like. Cause I hate my job, you know? And then they'll like come back with something like that. But the, I just said, they say, really? How so? That's so great to hear. Yeah, it feels really good to feel like I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I get to be home with the kids, and I also feel like I'm living out my purpose while lifting the financial burden off of my husband. As you know, farming isn't so great these days, right? I mean, seriously, it's not. <laughs> and then, that, then they're like, all of a sudden, like, well, what do you do? Well, I'm a marketing rep for an activewear company. Have you ever heard of Zaya Active? And I love asking them, have you ever heard of Zaya Active? Because... 90% of people have not heard of Zaya, which is awesome. And that starts a conversation right there. If they have heard of Zaya, it also starts a conversation because we are so small that you can be like, oh, that's awesome. Like, how did you hear about Zaya? And have you ever tried it? You know, you can kind of talk about those types of things with them. Um, <clears throat> and then I'll just give them a little lowdown. We're a fairly new company, just over two years old, and our mission is to inspire and uplift by making activity a fun and essential part of life. So basically, you get to help women shop for clothes that are going to make them look and feel amazing. I love hearing stories of my girls feeling confident, going to the gym, or sharing a selfie of themselves and Zaya out and about with their kids. It is seriously the most fun I've ever had making a paycheck, ever. <laughs> It is. It's like the best. If you don't feel that way, I'm sorry because it's the best. <laughs> okay. So you're kind of like talking about these things and then, you know, towards the end of this paragraph, I would probably try to transition into some sort of an invite unless I feel like they're really conversational and they're asking a lot of questions. Then I might let them ask more questions. But if I'm just, if I feel like it's the right time, then this is kind of when I transition to an invite. We have three things that we can invite to you guys. We have the hostess opportunity. We can invite them to be a rep or to just join your VIP group. The VIP group is so safe, you guys. If you, know, if you are way too afraid to ask about hostess or rep, always fall back on your VIP group because people are gonna, like, I hardly ever have anybody tell me no because they're like, oh yeah, you do flash sales in there? You do giveaways? Sure, why not? I'll check it out. They don't care. They'll just mute it if they don't like it. <laughs> but at least get them in there and check it out. So... <clears throat> the goal is to let them know that you're on a mission. So this is like your reason, your purpose, your why for being with Zaya. So if I'm, if I'm looking for hostess, I might say, I'm on a mission to empower and uplift as many women as I can. And my favorite way to do that is by running parties to get my hostesses free and half off Zaya. Would you like more information on being a hostess? Would you like more information? That is like the biggest line. Would you like more information? Would you like to learn a little bit more about whatever? If you don't ask that, they're never going to be like, oh yeah, I want to know about that. Typically people aren't like that. They would rather you ask them. So you have to ask, would you like more information about being a hostess? If you go down to rep, 
Would you like to learn a little more about what I do? If they say yes, you can say, great. Like, you can either plug them into Discover Zaya, you can send them a Discover Zaya call, you can send them the little video on the join page on um, your Zaya website. You could type up a little thing about like what you do as a rep. Um, there's so many options as to what you send them next that it really just depends on the person and kind of what you describe Zaya as yourself. So for me, when if anybody wants to know a little bit more about it, I'll just let them know kind of like, oh, you know, this is what I do. I help women get free and half off Zaya. Um, sometimes I'll send them that video from the join page. Usually I'll just kind of give them a little bit of information. I'll say like, what kind of information would you like to know exactly? You know, I let try to let them lead the conversation because we could like word bomb it all over them. <laughs> which is fine, but some people don't like that. And so it's really best if you can kind of minimize what you're sharing with them, share like only the important stuff. Don't be like, here's the comp plan and this is the starter kit and this is blah, 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 blah. Like that comes at the end, you know, talk more about the mission, what you do and why you do it. Um, yes, okay, so if they say yes, obviously get them for more information. If they say no, don't just be like, oh crap, I suck, I failed. They don't want any more information. Like that's not the case. They just might not be interested right now. They might not understand what you have to offer. That's okay. You just need to come back and say, no worries. It was great talking and catching up. Will you do me a favor? If you do come across people who need help with like whatever it is, you know, if you're offering the hostess, the hostess opportunity, the rep opportunity, or the VIP group, then you can say like, are you looking for, you know, or wait, if you come across people who are looking for some community or who you think might like the VIP group, who you think could use this business opportunity, um, because I'm so passionate about it, will you just connect them and introduce them to me? I'd really appreciate it. So you're asking for that referral. Whether they do it or not, who knows? but you planted that seed with them. So now if Zaya ever comes up again, they're gonna remember that you told them that and they're gonna remember that you asked them to refer people to you. And so they're going, you know, whether they do it or not, who knows, but it's going to come to mind because if they respond to you, they'll be like, oh yeah, sure thing. And they'll think of you. So just plant that seed, you never know what could come of it. Some people will be ready for an invite now Others will require a few connects over time. This is so true, you guys. So don't get frustrated if you're having conversations with people and they're leading nowhere. Like maybe they're just giving you one word answers. Maybe they're not conversational at all. That's okay. If the conversation feels forced, make sure you have their name written down. You know, maybe write down the date that you last talked to them. And then you need to come back and check in with them in like two or three months, okay? Give them that time, come back and check in with them two or three months later, use the script above, hey, it's been a while since I checked in with you, how are you, I hope things are going great. And then by that point, you know, maybe they'll have been watching your posts or maybe they'll, they've watched your stories and they're kind of like following along with you or maybe they totally forgot about you and now all of a sudden you're back on their radar and they get to have that conversation with you again. So. Um, follow like continuing to connect over time is what builds those relationships and it's not going to be a one and done type thing like you some people you can't talk to them one day and expect in a week they're gonna be your best friend they're gonna want to join your team and they're gonna be you know your next rock star like <laughs> it rarely happens like that you have to be friends with them and connect with them over time in order to build that relationship so if any of you girls on my team know some of, some of my ladies took a long time to join and that's okay. And so you just have to remember that when you're talking to people that it takes some people a long time. Like they just need to watch and observe and think about it. And, and that's okay. You know, just because not everybody's like me and jumps the gun and like dives into a new opportunity at the first chance doesn't mean that that's what other people do. So be patient. Okay following up you guys like this is the number one most important thing in if like that you can take out of this okay 
I don't care how you connect with people. I don't care how the invite comes out. But if you are not following up with them, you are doing a disservice to them and to yourself because following up is so important. And obviously we want to follow up without being annoying. So my question to you is, do you believe in Zaya? Do you believe in our products? And do you believe in the opportunity? Like, think about that before you talk to anybody. Do you believe in Zaya and the opportunity? And do you feel like in your heart it is life changing? If you do, then following up with people is not going to be hard because you know that they cannot even experience Zaya unless they buy a pair of leggings or they buy a bomber jacket or they join your team. Like they can't experience this life changing opportunity or these products that make you feel amazing unless they invest in it. And so our job is to help them invest in it. And 80% of sales happen between the seventh and 10th follow-ups. Like you guys, <laughs> seventh and 10th follow-ups. That's a lot of follow-ups. And the goal of the follow-up is to keep the excitement and the hope of the opportunity at the top of their mind. Because there's going to be people who you talk to and they're going to be like, I really like, they're going to ask you all the questions. They're going to ask you all the questions about Zaya. They're going to want to know the comp plan. They're going to want to know like everything, all the details, the nitty gritty details. And then all of a sudden they're going to fall off the map. I have two girls like this right now, by the way, they're going to stop responding to you or they're going to be, every time you message them, they're going to be like, Oh, I'm sorry. I've been so busy. I haven't even thought about it. Like, Oh, that's cool. Like whatever. And then I tell them, I tell them this, I say, I'm going to follow up with you in a few days if I haven't heard from you. And then they'll be like, okay, sounds good. Then I have no problems following up with people because they're like, I'm like, I told them I was going to follow up with them. So they're not going to be shocked when I message them. Um, and if, if I don't tell them that, I still don't feel bad about it because I believe in Zaya so much that I would never, I don't know. I just think that everybody needs to do it. So this PDF right here, I should have typed up some of the scripts. Okay. Before I go on, can you guys see this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> don't want to screw this up. So this is from Team Z again, you guys. This is from my boot camp. I saved it and I'm sharing it with you guys. Two principles of following up without being annoying. And you've, you've talked to me about follow-ups before. You've heard these before. Never ask them to do anything in your follow-up. So don't ask them to call you back, text you back, RSVP, compete, complete their per purchase. And because that is annoying. That's really annoying. If you like, someone's like, okay, are you ready to join the team? They're going to be like, no, go away. That's annoying. But if you just send them a message, hold on, let me show you. I should have, I should have printed off or typed up these follow-ups scripts. You guys, I have like 10 of them. I'll try to type them up for you guys. Okay. So say, look at this. Team Z gives me 10 follow-up scripts. Just checking in. Like I promised I would, what questions do you have for me? Like so easy when you tell them you're going to follow up, that is like the easiest thing. <clears throat> just making sure you got my email or checking to see if you have questions. See, I'm not, we're not asking them to actually do something for you. You're not saying, are you going to join my team? Are you going to buy the leggings? Are you going to host the party? Like you're just saying, do you have questions? Do you have questions? I'm excited about the goals we discussed. Can't wait to get started. Like you're not asking them to do anything. You're just following up with them. So there's my team Z, by the way, in case you were wondering, I can show you guys that more too, if you want to know more about it. But this is totally off topic. This is Dasani, you guys, sparkling water with like raspberry lemonade. And it's so good. There's no booze in it, but I think booze would be good in it in a summer day. So just say, okay, don't ask them to do anything in your follow-up and keep your follow-up short and sweet, preferable sent, preferably sent via messenger or text. So you want them to be able to read it on your screen, right? Like you're going to get a message from someone and you want them to be able to read it like right here because that gives, the, that makes them feel comfortable and they're not going to be annoyed by that. If they have to open your message to see what it says, that's annoying. Okay. It is. It's, an, it's annoying to them. They're going to be like, I don't want to have to open that whole message to see what she says. And then they're just going to push it down push it down and they're never going to open it. And then it's just whatever. So keep it sweet, short and sweet. And like I said, it makes them more comfortable because they don't want you to know they've read it. 
if they are not able to and ready to respond right now. And if people don't respond, you guys, don't take it personally. We're like humans, I swear, are wired to not respond right away. And I feel like it makes, it gives us time. Um, a lot of times it's our subconscious giving us, I don't know if, okay, I heard this from Jen Sincero. She was talking about how your subconscious will sabotage you. And if you are afraid of something, you might read that message and then it's going to come to the top of your mind like, oh yeah, repping. But then you're going to get all nervous about it and then a kid's going to cry. Like your subconscious is going to sabotage you and they're going to be like, I have to get take care of the kid right now. I can't respond. Or I have to, um, I have to go feed the dog. Like I have to do that right now. Like your subconscious is so strong and it will do that to you. And that's what's happening to the people you're following up with, believe it or not. My Instagram's blown up. Um, so following up, does, do you guys have any questions about following up? I gotta get this, this whole, um, teensy thing at the top is, or is zoom thing. Nope. There it is. Okay. So following up is an act of love. You guys and not following up communicates. I just don't care about you. Like, you're telling people when you follow up that you love them and you care about them and you believe that this is going to change their life. It's going to change their confidence. It's going to change something about them for the better. And if you are not following up, you're just communicating that you don't care and you're kind of letting them fall through the cracks. Um, so don't worry about following up with people. It needs to happen. Okay. I told you it was going to be a long one. What questions do we have? Because this is like the tip of the iceberg, you guys. There's so much more we can talk about. So if you have questions, ask them. So with the challenges that we did this week or that we are doing, um, we've, get, we've gotten like sample scripts. But when I went to go like type mine up, it was crazy long, like way longer than I thought it would. So you're saying that's probably a bad idea and people are like, holy moly, too many words, not reading. I don't, I think it depends on the person too. Like if you, if okay. it's someone you know, I feel like it's okay. But sometimes yeah. I think that, like I get a little bit, it's like competing in my, in my inner self because I'm like, that's not how I do it, you know, because right. I like to make that connection first with people. Like, hey, how are you? And then like, let the conversation lead to Zaya versus, Hey, I've been thinking about you. You should join Zaya. We have the best company, like, you know, whatever the script is. So whatever feels natural to you, to me, I just like to make that initial connection and then lead it to Zaya. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that answers your question or not. No, it does. It felt really like forced, but I also know that it's very outside of my comfort zone. So I didn't know if that was more of the issue of, being outside of my comfort zone and just needing to go for it or if it was like oh I haven't right found like the right way for myself to approach people yeah that makes sense and and I feel like I've become more um in tune to kind of that as well like not just from my team z boot camp but because I have been getting so many of those on my Instagram from other people lately that I feel like if if the people I'm messaging are getting those from, from other people too, then I feel like they're just going to dismiss me right away because they're just going to see me as another direct sales person that's trying to get them to buy or join my team or whatever. So I don't know. I just like to, yeah, I like to lead into the connections and being a friend first. It takes more time, <laughs> but I don't know. So yeah, that's the answer to your question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nicole, did you have a question? I thought you unmuted too. I wasn't sure. Um, or comment. I'm using Teamsy, which I love, but do you have any advice for those who are not using Teamsy? Because I think there's a lot of girls on our team who haven't made that commitment. Um, yeah. And I know you talk a lot about like talking to them in two months, which with Teamsy, it's really easy. But do you have any advice maybe just to help with those who aren't ready to do teams yet. Yeah. I think having a planner would be good, like a monthly planner, um, and having a list. So I've tried to see, like for me, I've tried to do paper and pen, but I'm not disciplined enough actually to do it on paper and pen. 
Um, but I would definitely just write a list of people if they respond to you, put their name down in a notebook. And, um, you know, as you're talking to people, when you get to that point where you're extending an invite, you need to write down a date that you're going to follow up with them. So open up your planner, find the date that you want to follow up with them. If you haven't heard from them and write their name on that date on your planner, on your calendar so that, you know, you know, make it your daily non-negotiable. You're going to open up your calendar. You're going to do all your follow-ups on every single day that you have them planned. And if you are reaching out to people consistently, you should start to have a lot of follow-ups every day. You know, you should start to get like, you know, at least three to five a day, you know, if not more, you know, not like 10 or 12, it just depends on how your conversations are going and how many people you're connecting with. But definitely you have to find a way that's going to work for you because everybody does this differently. I mean, I know some people use Google streak or Gmail streak or whatever it is. And they love that. Like it's just a way to categorize your emails and they do everything through emails. And like my brain does not function on emails. I don't know why I just cannot figure emails out or like streak. Um, so basically, you know, like I said, just make sure you have a notebook of these names written down, make sure that you're going back and checking it and make sure that you're writing in dates of when you want to follow up with these people because they're going to slip through the cracks otherwise. So, but my biggest advice is to try team Z for a month, <laughs> to try team Z for a month. And I under, like, I understand, I know it's an investment and I get that. I just see so much value in it because my brain, you guys, if you, I mean, you guys know, like my brain is all over the place and that focuses me. It gives me that time. Like, okay, I have to sit down and work my business. I can hash these numbers out in like 30 to 45 minutes and then I can be done for the day and just kind of respond to messages as the day goes on. So, um, and the cool thing, if people start to get on team Z is that we can have like a team report, like we can all be on the team report and we can do like leaderboards and I can show you guys everybody's progress. So I'm just saying, thank you guys. I wish I, I, I feel like I should get like a discount for, for like <laughs> promoting it. I should talk to Eric about that. I'll message him. So how many months in were you before either one of you guys decided to do the team Z? Like what made you decide to switch your method? That's a good question. I'm glad you brought it up actually, because I was thinking about this today and I did not have time to do anything like this in the first, like, gosh, nine months of my business, six to nine months. I mean, I was like book solid. I was barely keeping my head above water with my parties and with my hostesses. And, um, so I when I got into Team Z when I started making the switch of needing to find, to build a team, basically. Um, my numbers right now for like sales and personal volume and all of that and group volume are <clears throat> where they need to be to rank advance, um, you know, a couple, a couple ranks. And what I need now is to grow my team in order to build. So at, that's the point that I decided like, okay, now I need to start finding new people who are ready to commit to the business side of things. And so I think it really depends on if you're having issues with finding hostesses, if you're having issues with finding people to join your team or join your VIP group, then that's when you kind of need to start reaching outside of your parties, outside of your inner circle, outside of your VIP group, and really um, connect with people that are outside of that circle. So whenever for you that would be. I don't know if that helps, but for me, it was kind of the same thing. The first like six months were just like the last thing I was thinking of was a tracking system. But to be honest, I wish I would have done it around like month three or four, even just to keep track of hostesses, customers, even if it has nothing to do with prospects, because I, I finally caved and paid the $30 a month when I was just like, overwhelmed and I what was happening was I wasn't following up with like customer orders or hostesses and I would think about it like a week later and be like dang it or even like a month later and it's a missed opportunity and I finally you know I had this like document in Excel because I'm like an Excel person and I love it 
but I never went to it and it wasn't on my phone very well. And then I had my notes section and it just got to the point where I just needed something that was organized and focused and it's a hundred percent worth the $30 a month. Even if you're not at the time, I mean, you should always be looking at your routine, but if it's, even if it's not for relationship marketing or, you know, anything like that, just for your business, Teams is awesome. I like that you can upload your customers into Team Z. You can upload your entire Facebook friends list, um, your downline. I mean, that that alone. I mean, because when I started with Team Z, actually, do I had girls. I was following up with customers who had ordered like in the summer, and I was following up with them in like January or February. I'm like, I'm sorry, I had a baby, and um, I didn't follow up with you. So how's your Zaya? And you know, only half of those people even respond to me, but it still, it, it helped me realize like, Oh my gosh, like there's all these customers that I have not even touched base with at all. So yeah, I think it definitely helps with organizing everything. Yeah. It just does all the hard work for you. All like the tedious time consuming stuff. It does it all. Yep. For and sure. it's user friendly. I think. I think so too. And he's got a lot of videos too that you can watch to get started and kind of figure it out too. So, um, but there are other ones out there too. I know a lot of people, I know like, I think Emma and Rachel Smith were both using, I don't remember what they're using. They're using something else too. And they can, I'm sure they'll share that with you guys if they want to share that. But um, yeah, just any way that works for you. Everybody does it differently. I know a lot because I know a lot of our girls too have tried Teams and they're like, I just can't figure it out. I don't, or not figure it out, but they're like, I just don't like it. It's not my style. I'm like, then don't do it. <laughs> like, just don't do it. So it has to, it has to work for you. Sure. So anything else you guys can think of? just personal how how many what are your numbers like like how many people are you reaching out to a day i know it's crazy because you're in a boot camp but um what's it looking like for you let me look hold on because mine are just easy right now mine are like three because my life's crazy right now <laughs> yeah oh my gosh yeah so i do 12 prospects um three or six customers 12 prospects six customers and then three reps um, every day. And then like right now I have seven follow-ups I need to get on. So those seven will end up being kind of like prospects. I end up connecting with like 20 people a day at least usually. And that's not to include customers. So, um, and you're seeing a lot of growth, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am. I really, it, I, yeah. Yeah, I am. I really like it. I feel like, um, you know, before Team Z, I feel like I met everybody pretty much from parties or, you know, like hostesses or, you know, just parties in general. And so now this has been really an interesting way to connect with people outside of my VIP group and really introduce new people to Zaya, which is kind of, it's, it's fun. It's really fun to get to like share that with them. And um, I know I have a lot of a lot of ladies talking about it, of course, as it always goes. And, you know, maybe they'll join tomorrow. Maybe they'll join in a year. You just never know. So I'm glad that I am tracking them, though. That's for sure. Cole, do you work outside of your house? Yeah, I'm a dental hygienist three days a week. So how do you balance that? <laughs> Or how do you try? Um, well, it's crazy right now because I'm pregnant and I have a 15 month old and a 10 year old stepson who lives with us full time and we're buying a house. So like, it's crazy <laughs> to be honest, the last like two to three months, I've had a lot less time than I did previously, but I've built a big enough business and a foundation. Um, before I was pregnant because Fatigue is just the worst. Before I was pregnant, I got up early. That's, I mean, that's pretty much when I scheduled my posts. I reached out to people was between like 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah. And then nap time on my days off. Since I do work only three days a week, I have more days at home. But with kids, I mean, 
Rachel, I don't know how you do it because I feel like I have more time when I am working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. The days I'm at home, I like I feel like I don't get nearly as much done business wise as I do when I'm working. Um, my lunch breaks, I I'm gonna probably do a training on this, but recently to help compensate for my lack of time parties were just so consuming like the three to five day parties were consuming and then running them in groups which I had to do because I had a schedule because I could not yes. on my phone which just wasn't working because nobody seen right. and I can't can't do events because I can't post live I tried for the first time this weekend a one day event and it's been awesome the party's at like $500 I went live one time. <laughs> I had like two days of like intense posts and then following the party, I've done like one or two posts a day and just thank you posts for orders. And it's been great. So I have a whole template for that. I plan on doing a training and I think that's my solution for my lack of time right now and parties. As far as follow-ups go, now that I'm in my second trimester and I can like, I'm, I'm sleeping a little bit better and you know, um, not fatigued. I'm starting to get up early again, just even like 20 minutes. Cause you can get some connects in, in like 20 minutes a day. Honestly, I'm just fitting it into like the little cracks in my day and having grace for myself, knowing that this is just a season of my life and it'll eventually I'll figure it out. Like <laughs> I hope, but yeah, no, the party thing is I'm really excited for the one day party because parties were the most consuming thing for me. So I'll share that. And I think it'll work really, really well. Cause I think people like that one day party anyways. And I, I, I want to try like, it too. Yeah. I went live for like 20 minutes. Like I just showed everything. Like and it was like one of my worst lives ever because I was like not used to like going through it all. But yeah, I just had my rack clothes behind me and showed it all. And then yeah, worked well. So no. did you like try on different outfits or just show them off your rack? Just show them off the rack. I had one outfit on. Wow. It was light and tights. I had multiple, like I had the jacket, a twist tank and a bra on. So I was able to kind of like unlayer and I might've done like the charcoal split back. Um, but I didn't change my, my bottoms. I thought maybe next time I could do two lives, one with tops and bras and the second one with bottoms just to organize my brain yeah. <laughs> but during that hour of the event doing just two lives um I'll kind of play around with it but I mean I see Rachel like change into clothes during when she opens up her mail all the time and she's like people love it I mean I think it's you know it's real so I think it would be easy to just like step up the camera and throw some new leggings on but I'm pregnant and I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it takes, it takes an extra minute to get things on when you're pregnant. You got to situate it right and get it over your belly. Yeah. 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 So I hear you. <laughs> no, I am excited about that though. I'm, I really want to try it, especially now that the weather's getting nicer and like my kids want to be outside and I want to be outside with them. And I'm like, I don't want to be stuck inside, you know, doing parties during the week and stuff like that. So I'm, yeah, I love the idea of doing a one night thing. And I was like, Sunday is such a good night. But I was like thinking, I'm like, I wonder if Tuesdays would work. Because then Wednesday's launch day. And I'm like, are people busy on Tuesdays this summer? Probably. Yeah. I'm just so busy on weeknights with working. Yeah. yeah. And my husband works like a swing shift anyway. So I'm busy like all nights except on weekends. And I found, so what I did is I had it on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I gave people like... I rewarded them with bonus points to the gift card entry um, if they ordered by Sunday night. So I had like three orders on Sunday night. I extended the party through like Monday. And then somebody asked me, it was crazy. Somebody asked me if we could extend it through Wednesday, which I was already planning on doing because nice. of Wednesday. Um, so we extended it through Wednesday. Wednesday came, one or two girls ordered, and then we're extending it through tomorrow just for those last minute orders. So, yeah. But I'm not making all of those posts. Like I had eight party posts in an hour during the event and probably three posts leading up like on Saturday, like a morning post, Saturday night, and then Sunday morning, and then just eight posts. So it was just like I needed like a kid-free hour, and it was after the kids went to bed. So Perfect. Yeah. 
And that's when most people are on their phone anyways, is after they put their kids to bed and after they eat dinner and they're just sitting around, you know, winding yeah. down. So it was good. Yes. I'm excited for you to share that with us. Yeah. Kimberly, what do you, do you work full time? Yeah, I do. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to figure out, I use, a lot of times I use my lunch hour, um, or after the kids go to bed, cause I wake up early to get my workout in. Mm-hmm. So I'm getting up at 4:45 already to work out, <laughs> to get myself ready and out the door and the boys to school and daycare. And, um, my husband right now is busy season for him. He, uh, is a seed salesman. So, um, he's, he's crazy busy. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of times it's like, you know, eight o'clock, I finally sit down. So then I'm like, Oh crap, what do I need to do? Yeah. So yeah. Our parties, what's consuming your time the most? I, so I'm a little OCD. So <laughs> the scheduling, like I have different files. So I have every day and I have the pictures and what I, the posts already. So then it's been quicker, the more parties that I've done. Um, but initially that was so time consuming to figure out like what to put in the post and what pictures and all of that. Um, but now I think it's more a matter of figuring out like who to follow up with and those time frames and how to track it and how, how will that tracking system work for me? I found like recently my parties have slowed down. So I don't have as many, um, each month. And the weeks that I don't have parties are when I'm able to actually like follow up with prospects and customers. And so that's, what's exciting about this one day party is this week I'm getting like the $600 from the party, but I'm not doing the party posts and all that kind of stuff throughout the week, but I'm still reaping the benefits of that one day party. So, um, yeah, I'll try to, I think I'm going to be able to put the template together tonight so I can at at least like share it by tomorrow and maybe I'll just jump on live sometime this weekend and kind of go through it. But I pretty much told you everything I'm going to say. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, so I would try that. If you want to do it next, do you want to do a team call next week on it, Nicole? Or yeah. Okay. I mean, whenever. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You you can pick when you. We'll, we'll do it Thursday if that works. Okay. Same time. Let's just do it. Okay. Sounds great. It's gonna be short because that's, that's pretty okay. much say. But <laughs> this one was extra long, so. I'll, uh, we're going to stop the recording.